pick the most valuable. This particular piece, um, made in Japan, it's that sumo wear, the wet slipwear that's textural. This particular piece is a floor or hearth vase. This particular piece is unglazed on the interior and glazed on the exterior. And value on this piece is about $75. It dates to the turn of the 20th century. Oshkosh, Germany, this place, that place, Scotland with Patty's family, I don't know, you know, Mike in Ohio, none of that, it's Japanese. Let's continue. And the state sale. Um, it says France on it. It's a Rococo revival image, right? And it's a trinket box. I can't open it now, I had it open before. Porcelain, hand painted, hand gilded, hand beaded, hand roped. So the rope is actually brass. The beading here and the gilding is gold, gold leaf. This is hand painted, not transferred image, it's hand painted. And the inside is glazed as well. And there's a mark on the bottom that indicates it's made in Limoges, France. This particular piece is very large for scale. And it's late 19th, early 20th century. And you acquired it how? So you bought it at a state sale. Did you get a bargain? Did you negotiate for it? What do you mean they wouldn't negotiate? They wanted no negotiation. What did you pay? 40. 40 zero? Oh, well, okay. They didn't know what they had, so you didn't really have to negotiate, because 40 is pretty darn good for this. Oh, hey, the beer's here. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the light. It's his. You, you can have Whose it. is it? Oh, it's yours? <laughs> I love that. That's priceless. That was great. I could not have done that if I actually did that. <laughs> If I planned that, I couldn't have done it. It's his, really? Hilarious. <laughs> oh. It's always fun at Dr. Lori's show. <laughs> that was great, I owe you a beer. <laughs> I'm glad it's not Corona, right? <coughs> See, I'm coughing now because, see, my mother's going, you shouldn't have done that, Laurie Ann. Anyway, did I tell you what your piece is worth? You got a very good deal at $40. It's worth about $300. Yeah, I always tell people to negotiate. You know, I want to help sellers, too. I want to help the estate sale people, too. They got to know what they're giving away, what they're trying to sell. $40 for this is really quite fine. It's beautifully made. It's well executed. Your beer just messed up my lipstick. <laughs> Good, he said. Value on it again, about $300. It's quite beautiful. You got it as a college graduation gift? You didn't get jewelry either? <laughs> do, you, do you like it? Do you buy your own? I buy my own. I buy my own. <laughs> you do, why not? Okay, so you like this gift? Yes. And it was nice, and someone was heartfelt to give it to you. That was nice. How old is it? Do you think it was made in the 1980s? It has a mark on the bottom of it. It has a mark on the bottom of it. This mark means that it's an Asian mark. Okay. Okay. It's a chop mark, is what it's called. Thread. This piece was probably made in the 1980s. So it's not an antique Asian vase, and if you had an antique Asian vase, it would not have this sort of brown, off-white color. Okay, nice. Value on that? I don't know. I'd probably put 30 to 50 bucks on it. But still a nice gift. And you got the degree, which is worth more anyway. <laughs> How'd we acquire this? Well, that's nice. Uh-oh. Uncle Louie just fell out. <laughs> David. Where are you, David? What's the deal, David? You don't clean out the vases before? <laughs> oh, it's her fault? You're all a bunch of wimps. <laughs> it's my wife. 37 years of wedded bliss. He's sitting five rows away from her, I'll tell you. <laughs> huh. How'd you acquire it? Oh, man. It was? It's transfer wear. This image is not hand-painted on. It's transferred on. 
So it's a print that's been transferred and glazed over. And then, of course, in that, after the kiln, they put the gilding on the top. It's nice. And it's for a bouquet. I was appearing with the White House florist recently. She's a lovely woman who did all the flower arrangements for the presidents. And she always says, you know, remember the mouth matters. The mouth of the vase matters. So when we were talking about objects, I said, well, yeah, it's not a tulipery that would have little indentations where the tulip stems stand straight up. This one is for flowers that go all the way around. So the flowers would go like that, like a fan. And it's based on the mouth. Piece dates to the early years of the 20th century. Value on this piece, about $75. It's nice. And then Uncle Louie, <laughs> he's priceless. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you're having fun. Are you having fun? Are you learning things? I'm Dr. Laurie. It's fun to be with all of you. Thank you. What did we got here? Hi, Rebecca. Vase with cherubs. It's so ugly. It's beautiful, she says. <laughs> How'd you acquire this? Heirloom from your mother. Your mother was a keeper of the heirlooms. Nobody else wanted the cherubs who are playing music here, singing. Are they cherubs or are they pooty? Do you know the difference? No. Three degrees here, I know the difference. <laughs> Angels have wings, they're like, they're like um, adolescents. Cherubs look like this. They're little toddlers, kind of fat, chubby thighs and such with the wings. Pooty is a head with wings. That's how you know. Three degrees for that. <laughs> Three. Jump through the hoops. I had to stalk my thesis advisor to get him to read the dissertation. That's what I know. <laughs> Here's what else I know. It's made in Germany. It's Bavarian. It's German. <laughs> Value on this piece of dates to the early years of the 20th century, about $75. Can we find something worth some money? <laughs> How come this is here with this? Why is this with this thing from a Jim Beam bottle that doesn't go with this piece at all is together? Were you drinking and you forgot which, where it went and what are you doing? That's a piece of junk. Crap even. You put it in here like it belonged in here. Men. So Pete, tell me about this. Do you know who she is? She's very famous. She's one of the mistress. What'd you say? You tried to. How did you try? This will be good. How'd you try? You know how many years I had to study all these people? All these people. Louis the Fifteenth, Napoleon, Alexander the Great, the Tsar Nicholas. All these people in history. I tried to research it with my hat. What did you do? Did you ask a librarian? You brought it to me. Yeah. I love that. Hi, Dr. Laurie. I was just checking. Do you have time to research all this stuff for me? And then just get back to me. Like, at your convenience, and I'll make you dinner. Seriously? <laughs> you should see the emails I get. She's... It was your great-grandmother's from New York City? Was she French? Alsace-Lorraine. Alsace-Lorraine. Okay, so kind of French. Hitler liked Alsace-Lorraine, right? <laughs> you remember World War II. This is Madame Ray Camier. Madame Ray Camier is one of the many mistresses of King Louis XV, who reigns from 1715 to 1774 in France. He had a great time. They partied through the whole 18th century. <laughs> mistresses, hunting lodges. Louis XV, boy, he took the crown at five. I mean, he was, he was, had fun. After us, the deluge, right? After us, the French Revolution. Off with your heads, Marie Antoinette. This. Not, Mary, not Madame de Pompadour, this is Madame Ray Camier, a later one of his many mistresses. That's who she is. This is known as Ray Camier wear. You see her with that nice headband and the empire style, before push-up bras, the empire style. <laughs> they had them in the 18th century. Value on this piece, which is moriage, wet slip wear. This particular piece is an urn. It would be just sitting on a mantle somewhere. The flowers on the back. Usually red roses relate to passionate love. Value on this piece, about $150. Nice. Now you know who she is. Who is she, Pete? Madam. Madam. I just taught this to you. 
It's like the Penn State linebackers. Five minutes, they forget. They can remember every play in the book. They're very smart on the field. One thing they forget. Madame Ray Camier, French, 18th century. Your piece isn't French 18th century. Your piece, of course, is early 20th century, late 19th, early 20th century, but the, the, the story is, of course, uh, mid 18th century. Mom or grandma? It's from the 1940s. Is that mom or grandma? All right, probably your grandma. So Hull Art Pottery, pretty well known American pottery. So the Hull Company makes all kinds of functional objects and it also makes Hull Art Pottery. Art Pottery, of course, is like, ooh, it's for, you know, it's for nice. It's more decorative kinds of pottery. And that's what the Hull Art Pottery is here. This particular piece is a, is a low fired ceramic. That means it's fired at a low temperature. It's glazed and highlighted with pigment. And this particular piece stands, uh, you know, I don't know, somewhere around five inches, six inches tall. Value on that piece, about $40. And we've got this piece. Speaking of ceramics, Linda, how'd you acquire this piece? Linda, this is so thin. So lightweight, so thin. Where are you, Linda? Hi, hon. How'd you acquire this? Made in Germany, very lightweight. It's molded, right? Ceramic is porcelain. It's lusterware, that's what this purple looks like. It's called lusterware with gilding, that's gold leaf. It says made in Germany, which means it's made prior to 1945 and after 1921, so right there in the 20s to the 40s. And this particular piece valued transfer wear. This piece has, of course, the flowers which are transferred on. This is actually a stencil, which is stenciled on in the guild work. Two handles, right? And then you have the back piece here that says made in Germany. Not Western Germany, it doesn't have no, it has, it has a mark, it is not free of a mark or lacks a mark, that's important as well. And the entire piece is glazed on this side. It's very thin, you can see how thin it is. And it's more difficult, of course, and has to be of higher quality when it's so thin because it can easily crack in the kiln. Value on this piece, about $70. It's very nice. This particular piece is made between 1920 and about 1945. This particular piece is marked with the Goebel Company mark. It also has a mark on the back that says M.I. Hummel, which is for the nun who was drawing images, pictures of these particular figures that were then made into hand-painted earthenware ceramic Hummel figurines. So she's not making the figurines, she's drawing pictures so they can make the figurines. You follow me? Anytime you see a Hummel figurine, if you have multiple figures on the same base, value goes up. This particular one is in very good condition and was in a smoke-free home. It's in very good shape, you can tell by the condition. Value on this piece, about $150. Very nice. Tell me about this for the thrift store. So you bought these at a thrift store. I like them because they have teeth. You like them because they have teeth? They have teeth. They have teeth, okay. These little dragons, if you can see them, have teeth here and teeth here, okay? What are they used for? Teapots. They're teapots? Water, teapots. water matching water teapots. How do you get the water in? So you put the water in the bottom hole, and then what do you do? You hold it there, flip it over, and the water will not come out. You've tried it? So water has gone in, you tip it over, and it doesn't come out. You brought them here because I love them. So get out the water, put it in, turn it over. How do you get the tea in? Ah, now we've got a little problem now. We're putting little bitty bits of tea inside, right? But it did not come out when you did this, right? Okay, all right. When you poured the tea out, was there a sieve or did you get all the little tea leaves? I didn't use the tea. I used the water. All right. The teeth are not the sieve, but about back here, is probably the sieve, okay? So this is celadon glaze. It's hard paste porcelain, right? Very, very durable and value on these. I wish you had another one. You need another one. Value on this one, I would say $40. Value on this one, I would say 55. What did you pay? 69 cents each, okay. <laughs> well, that's a bargain too. But what you wanna do is, if they had more of them, the small ones, usually there are two small and one large, okay? okay? They usually are threes, nice.
He had an antique shop. Okay. So this particular piece is here. It's trying to look Asian, but it's actually American. Okay. So it's in a period we know of as the early years of the 20th century, the Orientalist period. It's earthenware ceramic. It's very thick and heavy, fired at a low temperature. It's glazed all the way through. Value on it about $60.